are there enough women? I would say no, which is why globally there's a, lot, um, a number of campaign, notable one in the UK and the US is called 50-50 Parliament and in the US is called 50-50. Um, and this is the idea of trying to get 50-50 uh, representation in the House of Lords and the House of Parliament in, here in the UK and in the U US it's in the Senate. Um, are there enough women? Absolutely. There are a number of incredible women who are unfortunately not always in the you know in front of you. They're not the names that come up. They're not celebrities. They're not dancing on social media. These are powerful women behind the scene and I know from my career in the civil service I've had the fortunate you know benefit of seeing these women these are women that run you know billion pound government departments these are women who are the architects of society in terms of decision making these are women that are you know ministers of government departments who are you know forced to reckon with but they're not quote unquote celebrities um and in a way in, in a world where that we're in where you know your, your number of followers that you have and social media can sometimes distort what the reality of you know power and influence is it can sometimes feel like there isn't representation or there isn't enough women what the real question and this is across sort of politically economically socially um, but what I would say is are men ready to be uncomfortable with the potential change that could take place, right? Because these women exist and these women are capable, they've got the intellect, they've got the not, they've got the ability to, but are men ready to be uncomfortable with the change? And I think that's where the problem is because we still have those stereotypes of what women can and can't do, who can lead and who can't lead. You know, in my career, I've, I've seen men be uncomfortable with taking orders from me not even like not even orders direction from me and I remember when I was moving um over to the Ministry of Defense and I'm like I'm really nervous because I'm going to be you know managing very senior people in the Navy so these are commodores and working directly with admirals um and you know I remember my manager just saying to me you know they they're going to be uncomfortable but they're there to do what you need to get done right and I think if that's if that notion of we want the best by any means necessary and that also means a woman at the top of it then we'll that's what we need to get the job done we've seen women in so many whether it's fortune 100 companies whether it's as leaders i know benedict mentioned margaret thatcher we've had angela markle we've had so many women even here in the uk who have been at the hem and leading the country but their gender and what they wear and whether they wear makeup has distorted their ability to deliver and be represented properly in society. Okay, what, what would you say about women in Nigeria and in Africa? So I think I'm a, I'm a millennial and I've seen, you know, I, grew, I was born and raised in the UK, but I'm very, I very much got my ear on the ground in Nigeria because there are phenomenal women, you know, all over, whether it's in the tech industry, whether it's in governance, whether it's, you know, in advocacy. I have seen even, you know, last last year, no, in 2020, um, where there was the NSARS protest and how women led and women delivered and women came together to bring about change. We've seen it even last couple of weeks with, with the Ukraine incident. I've worked with women both in Nigeria who are working morning and night to get young people out of Ukraine. I have, you know, I'm you know, speaking to incredible women, um, but again, they're not celebrities, so their names might not be popular, but they are capable, they're advancedly educated. And even the women who might not that have the economic currency in Nigeria, you know, whether they're market women, they are the drive of the economy. You know, their contribution to the, you know, the GDP of Nigeria cannot be ignored. The ability to create business, manage business, or, you know, uplift those businesses to be the, you know, the capital within their own family. You know, that's something women are, women in Nigeria, women who leave Nigeria to go to the West. That, you know, this is their power. They are problem solvers you know like in America would say they take the lemons and make it lemonade um, and I think that is the very essence of black women and the essence of African women and the you know the pinnacle of Nigerian society. Thank you uh, Temi. 
Benedicta, you've heard what Temi has said. She's given examples from the UK. She's also given examples from um, our neck of the wood, Nigeria. What would yeah. you say to that? Well, I, I think Temi captured it very well. Uh, women, you know, we are very resilient. We are the very fabric fabric on which society is built. But the, 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 the truth is that at the leadership level, at the, you know, we don't have women. If you talk about the, because you mentioned politics as well, sir. If you talk about the, the, national, the, the um, national assembly, where we have what over 400 about 469 representatives we have less than 7% of women i think it was rolake who said it the other time that we have 5 5% and 95% of men there and that is where the decision is taken and that was the example i gave at the beginning that women are they decided to strategize they came together to protest at the national assembly and we saw a U-turn at the House of Representatives level. We don't know what the Senate is going to say about that yet. So really, yes, women are the very fabric. If not for women, Nigeria would have gone. In fact, there would be no country called Nigeria. So the truth of the matter is that it is women who are so struggling. Oh, look at what Boko Haram, the killer headsmen, bandits, and what they're doing across our nation. Women can no longer go to the farms. And now we're having food scarcity. So we're really beginning to feel the impact of women now that we're not having food. Sometime ago, I was looking for Gary to buy in my village. I couldn't get Gary to buy because women are afraid to go to their farms. They are being raped, they are being killed, you know, in their farms. So really, without women, I don't know what will happen to the Nigerian society. But at the leadership level, where decisions are taken, whether in boardrooms or you know, at the political level, we do not have women. It's the men that are speaking for us. They are legislating for things that concern women. And that is where that is where the crux of the matter is. Until women begin to sit on the decision, where the decisions are taken, development in this country will continue to be stalled. That is what we're saying. And I'm really afraid the way we're going now. Hopefully the National Assembly can read, because these are the people that are legislating for the country. There isn't much we can do. We, we're doing so much at the micro level. But when it comes to the top level, where the voices of women are not being heard, and that is one of the big, very big barrier, uh, biases that we need to break. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Benedicta. Rolake, you heard what um, uh, Temi said, that there are very, very powerful and phenomenal women. They might not be visible, but they are very powerful. In the UK, across the world, in Nigeria. And you also heard what uh, Benedicta said that there needs to be more women who are at the top. So what would you say to that? If you look at Nigeria's banking sector, we have eight female CEOs today of banks in Nigeria. And a lot of the work that was done to get to that point was done because of the actions and policies of Sanisi Lamido while he was CBN governor many, many years back. If you look at leadership and the representation of women in pub public policy, in government, in Nigeria, a lot of the people who have been in positions of influence that have brought about that change have actually been men. So I take you back to the, to the government of Olushego Obasanjo, we had people like Unkozi Okonjewela, we had people like Aruma Ote, we had people like Obi Ezekwesili. And interestingly, one of this, the things that many of these women had in common, they were very qualified. These were women who had worked in the World Bank, in the IFC. And so it took specific people, usually male champions, because as our society is today, women are still underrepresented. So the people who are still the, making the decisions about who goes into certain positions are actually male. So we actually need allyship in order to push this agenda with our male folk. The second part of what will help this is actual quotas. And I know this is controversial. Some people don't believe in quotas. 
fair enough, we all have different beliefs. But look at Rwanda, it has actually worked for them. You could argue that Rwanda was by sheer necessity, given what happened on the genocide, a lot of the, the proportion of women relative to men increased significantly. But the other impacts that quotas has had is it, it raises awareness. And let's face it, everything in Nigeria is quota. Let's be honest, no matter how smart you are, right, as president, if they say that the presidency is rotating to the north today, you can be a professor of presidency, you will still not get that position. Why? Because there is a quota system around federal character. So as a nation, we're already used to quotas anyway. So the question is, why does it then become different when we're talking about quotas for female representation, when in fact, everything in Nigeria is about quotas? Um, and I think quotas have a place because they create some level of equity so long as you are looking at competent women. And I think that's very key. So I think that is another thing that will help increase female representation and leadership. And then over time, hopefully, you can look at quotas again. Um, so I think that's another thing. And then you have to make it okay from an early age for women to aspire to leadership. The more women we see in leadership, the more other younger women can visualize possibilities for their own lives and for their own careers and for their businesses and their professions. And then finally, I have to speak to those who are the uh, custodians of financial resources in our society, whether it comes to funding your election campaign or funding your business as a woman, money is absolutely key. Money answers a lot of things, and we need to find ways to help women mobilize resources to pursue their professional or political goals, because that's another thing that usually undermines their ability uh, to rise to leadership positions or aspire or run for elected office. So we need to find a way to mobilize capital and mobilize sustainable wealth that women can then harness to drive the change and the impact that they need to drive in society. Thank you.